Located along the banks of Trinity Bay lies the sleepy town of Trinity. Now reserved as a heritage site, this place was once the center for trade. Named by the Portuguese explorer Gaspar Cote Rael in 1501, he chose the name Trinity for the town after arriving on Trinity Sunday, which is the first Sunday after Pentecost. Trinity refers to the Christian doctrine where God is to believe to manifest in three forms, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. During the 1570s, this area was used heavily by those coming from England as a summer station as they fished for migratory species, only to be settled sometime in the 18th century. Merchant trade was the most significant part of this new settlement. It spurred the social and economic welfare of this small but growing town. It was believed that fishermen and traders would export as much as 40% of their cod, train oil, and seal products produced right here in Newfoundland. Because of this attention in the trading markets, this small British town caught the eye of the French. Despite having a small fort, the French captured the town twice, once in 1696 and the other in 1705, each time burning the properties to the ground. By 1798, this area transitioned to a site known for medical research. John Clinch, who was a friend of Edward Jenner, the physician and scientist who created the smallpox vaccine was here, introducing this vaccine to the new world. Over time, the town began to dwindle. It wasn't until the early 2000s that people began inhabiting this location once again. Between the years of 2011 and 2016, the population grew by over 20% to a total of 132 dwellings. Today, the town is used primarily as a way to connect with the past. As perhaps expected from the town's name, religion played an important part in the small community life. Luckily for us, St. Paul's Anglican Church was open for us to see. As one of several churches still in operation today, we knew that the connection with a creator was still very much prevalent and important today as it was in the past. As someone who grew up in a strict religious household, I felt at ease walking through these buildings. For me, it was a reflection of my childhood. For Akane, the experience was rather new. Living most of her life in Japan, a Christian church was something relatively new. Although they can be found throughout the country, most people who have been in a church in Japan do so for rental purposes. For them, a church that looks like this is but a setting for a wedding whereas temples and shrines are a place for worship. Seeing the Bible stories shown in the stained glass, I was able to convey some of the stories that were told to me, allowing her to have a better understanding regarding the Christian teachings and significance and the constant reminders within the church which are created through art. Our final stop within the town tied everything together. The Lester Garland properties are the living portion of this town. The store is essentially the same today as it was then. Most of the shop reflects the goods sold at the height of this town's history. Old hats, shoes, and clothing can be seen. Even sheets of wallpaper show the variants that those living in this area had when it came to fashion within the home. An Asian piece really stood out to us. Asian textiles have always been a source of beauty and foreign inspiration for those in the West. I just never thought I would see it in such a small community. To read more about Trinity or to book a guided tour of the location, please visit our website at joshuatravelguy.ca. Why not do us a favor and share this video while you're at it? Because together, we can share the world.